So, uh, von Neumann architecture. Now, von Neumann architecture, I will uh, be, uh, enlarge that. So, when you take the von Neumann architecture, this is uh, the this architecture is explaining how the computer has created uh, how these devices are connected to each other, right? So, this is basic uh, von Neumann architecture. Then I have given another small uh, picture. Uh, I will give you time to the draw that one. So under this one, write down. Under this one, write down. One Newman architecture consists of. Yeah, you can write. One Newman architecture consists of. A CPU. memory and input output devices memory and input output devices the program is stored the program is stored in the memory in the memory The CPU fits the CPU fits an instruction, an instruction from the memory, from the memory at a time, at a time, and execute it. So these programs. Uh, instructions will be uh, taken from the memory at a time and executed. That means one instruction per time. One instruction per time will be executed from the memory at a time and executed. So I will go to the major components of that. Uh, third sentence, uh, okay, uh, the CPU fits an instruction from the memory from the memory at a time at a time and executes it and executes it okay i will give a small time can you draw this uh, diagram also because it is uh, what is actually inside the cpu what you can get Registers even we'll be discussing these registers later. If you can please uh, take this down, this uh, diagram also. Because the earlier diagram uh, that uh, register part is missing. So take it down. After drawing, raise your hand.
Okay, I think uh, time is enough. I think I'm recording the lesson also. You can uh, later even you can draw it, right? Then we'll see uh, what are the major components of the architecture. We have central processing unit, that is the CPU, known as CPU. So when you take the CPU, uh, inside that we have control unit. Control unit is there, that is uh, control signal of all devices of the computer system. Actually control unit, what it is doing, it is controlling all the devices connected to the computer. And there's something called uh, encoding part, uh, decoding part is happening. I will, I will discuss it later in the fetch decode execute cycle. So this controlling uh, is done by the uh, control unit. Then there's something called arithmetic and logic unit, ALU. So it carries out mathematical and logical operations. They are, please uh, write down uh, mathematical operations such as multiplication, uh, division, uh, addition, subtraction, then comparisons also. That is greater than, greater than, no equal, less than, less than, no equal. Comparison also done, right? Uh, take them down within the within bracket there. It carries out mathematical logical operations and the comparisons actually. The comparisons, take them down within bracket. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, greater than, greater than, no equal. That is for comparison. Less than, less than, no equal. Then you have something called memory registers. The memory registers, what is doing? Register is one of a small set of data holding places which is part of the computer processor. So inside the processor, you can find out these registers. So there are some different registers I have given in the second diagram, not in the first diagram that is missing. That's why I asked you to draw that one. Uh, a register may hold an instruction or a storage address or any kind of data. So registers, there are different registers. They can hold instructions. Some can uh, store addresses or different data even information. Uh, will be uh, hold here, right? So here, uh, actually, the process data from the ALU and the data needed to the needed to the ALU will be uh, stored inside the registers, right? So there are different registers. We'll uh, go through them later. Then uh, you have memory that is uh, called memory unit. Memory unit is uh, consist of either primary memory or secondary memory. Now we have discussed uh, earlier primary memory and all that. So primary memory can be either RAM, ROM. Secondary memories uh, we have discussed uh, optical devices, magnetic devices, and uh, solid state devices. We have discussed them, right? Then we have input devices. That is also we have done uh, last week. And the output devices, right? Then there are something called data bus. The different buses are there, data bus, uh, control bus and address bus is there. Uh, write, uh, write down on the data bus, the data bus. A data bus is a system. A data bus is a system. Within a computer or device, within a computer or device, consisting of a consisting of a Connector or set of wires. Connector or set of wires.
that provide transportation for data that provide transportation for data Right. And I have given control bus. Control bus is used to transmit a variety of control signals to components and devices. Here, write down uh, in your tute, it's not there, not the control bus. You have, uh, don't write this part. Write down address bus. Here, you have the spaces. Here, write down address bus. There, write down. Under that write down, address bus is unidirectional. That means one way, right? Address bus is unidirectional. It is concerned with, it is concerned with, it is concerned with passing an address passing an address one way one way from the cpu to ram from the cpu to ram the purpose of an address bus is the purpose of address bus is to identify to identify the addresses of the addresses of the Location in cache or main memory. Location in cache or main memory. That is to be read from O. That is to be read from O. That is from that is to be read from O. Written to that is to be read from or written to what are they make up unidirection address right addresses but address buses right so there are different uh, now uh, different ways right but only one way it is going now as an example if it is going from uh, CPU to RAM that is one way right that uh, whatever the RAM to CPU another they are, but not the same bus, right? Not the same bus. Okay. Then uh, we'll move to uh, next part. Fetch execute cycle. Now, actually, what is happening now when you are connected, uh, when you are, when your processor is working, actually, how the processor is taking each instruction and execute. That is described by the fetch execute cycle fetch decode execute or fetch execute cycle. So what is happening actually at the beginning, fetch an instruction from, actually CPU is fetching one instruction, right, from the memory. Then what will happen? It will be decoded. Now I told the uh, computer can understand only ones and zero. So whatever the signal coming to the processor, uh, the now processor has already programmed. Now, as example, if you get one, 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 something like this, right? Or if you are getting a signal like this, something like this, right? That will be program. If you get something like this, what you have to do? That is program in the processor. That is pre-programmed, right? You, we don't want to worry about that. So according to the signal or the data, right? This processor will execute some instructions. Processor will execute some instruction. So that decoding part, that signal to the real command, 
that decoding is that one decode can make a happy in a signal like a a bit of process a in a command a cutter convert Kerrigan so that is called decoding so decoding will be done decoding the instruction then execute that will be the uh, final step that is executing the instruction right so this is called fetch decode execute cycle you have to uh, memorize this stuff right and you you should be able to draw them right fetch decode or fetch execute cycle so what is actually happen happening is given here uh, here is step one fetch the instruction from the memory from the memory it is taking the first instruction then it is going to the control unit ah now in the cpu you have different parts it is taken to the uh, instruction to the control unit now in the inside the cpu you have three parts the, those are control unit alu and the registers right now this is going to the uh, instruction into the command that is uh, decoding decoding instruction into co commands that is done by the control unit control unit so other than the controlling devices control unit do it doing decoding part also decoding part also then the step three execute command so whatever the decoded command will be executed by the alu arithmetic logic maybe it is addition subtraction or something else right different um, command right so whatever it is executed by the alu then step four is again storing the result in the memory so it is again storing in the memory then it is taking the next instruction right so this is uh, how it is happening so when you take the main memory it can be ram cache memory uh, registers all are considered as as main memory so usually what is happening actually uh, this uh, processor cannot read uh, uh, main memory or ram at, at once so what what we have here between the cpu and the uh, cpu and the ram we have registers and the cache memories so from this stuff we are taking the data here right so uh, in the nowadays computers uh, uh, we have uh, cache memories with uh, processors uh, plus registers so because of that from those stuff uh, control unit is taking this uh, reading the uh, instruction but uh, registers and cache memories are taking data from the ram that's how it is working okay then we'll go to the multi core processors that means several processors if we are having several process, processors together this is known as multi core processor write down under that here yeah, write down a multi core processor a multi core processor is a single computing component is a single computing component single computing component with two or more independent with two or more independent actual processing units actual processing units within bracket put cores dual core core to do like that i3 means uh, three cores seven cores like that cores c o r e s right units Within bracket put cores, which are units, which are units that read and execute program instructions, that read and execute program instructions. Therefore, Therefore, the single processor can run, the single processor can run
multiple instructions multiple instructions on separate course on separate course at the same time at the same time need of multi core processors are need of multi core processors are write down under that uh, first point first point can be run a program can be run a program by dividing some parts by dividing some parts so it get executed fast so it get executed fast second one second one it enables it enables parallel programming so parallel computing actually we have discussed so parallel programming it enables pa parallel programming third point third point to get the high performance from a single machine to get the high performance from a single machine from a single machine from a single machine okay then we'll go to the memory hierarchy so memory hierarchy when you are considering about memory hierarchy how this memory has arranged it can be according to size according to capacity according to uh, cost according to speed right so this uh, when you take the memory uh, and when you are comparing that if you uh, size and the capacity size and the capacity the difference is size Uh, and the capacity means the uh, data that you can store the size the capacity can be a bit uh, less than the size right uh, have you uh, i think you have seen when you take the pen drive when you take a pen drive 8 gb pen drive you are taking right? then you are going to properties and you are checking it is not actually so 7. Point something is there 7.9 something is there why because they are keeping some uh, memory space uh, to keep their Uh, file structure the, they are using for the file structure that's why you don't get the uh, same size as the capacity right so it can happen so size and the uh, capacity is increasing when you are going so what is the less cap capacity seven registers then cache memory then main memory that is ram solid state disk magnetic disk optical disk and the magnetic tape has the highest size and the capacity when you are talking about the cost cost uh, per bit so if you take cd and all that you can uh, take around 700 mb like uh, for 20 rupees nowadays uh, it's around 20 rupees cd compare this around 700 mb is there but if you take registers and cache memory if you even you take, want to take uh, 4 mb 8 mb the uh, cost is high you can't uh, separately uh, plug them but it's still if you take uh, ram that you can separate plug no? so so that is also bit expensive than the these cds and all that that's why when you are going up that is registers has the 
uh, highest uh, cost and uh, when you compare the speed also when you compare the speed also highest speed is having with the registers that's why here increasing speed and the cost cost also increasing when you are comparing with the magnetic tapes um, speed also high so highest speed has registers then uh, uh, to uh, process process something you get uh, when you are accessing time when you are considering about accessing time it's not here accessing time so highest uh, time is coming to this one so lowest time is coming to registers speed is high means access time is low so you, it's better write somewhere in the uh, tute uh, when you are going up access time decreasing when you're going up access time decreasing or you can uh, draw the other side arrow like this access time increasing it's better write down like this access time increasing when you're going down access time is increasing access time is increasing Okay, we'll go to the memory separately. Some students have sent me a message that uh, thunder and lightning here also the same, right? But I'm not uh, much worrying about them because uh, we are still we can continue the class without any problem. And if you are connecting the mobile phone and all that doesn't matter. When you use the computer only, uh, small problem is having, right? Okay, try to uh, be in touch, but anyway, I will uh, put the recording for those who uh, missed the class, don't worry. Uh, then uh, when you are taking the volatile memory, we have different memories. Volatile memory means when the power goes, whatever the inside the memory will be deleted. Right? As I example, you are doing something. Currently working programs is, uh, is there in the memory. RAM. Currently working programs with the again. When the power goes, so whatever you were doing will be lost. Right? So next time when you switch on the computer, uh, now that means you don't get that uh, data. You don't get that data again. Right? So this is why, that, that is why called volatile memory. Volatile can make, right? So, what are the volatile memory registers? Are there cache memory? Are there RAM is there, right? So, uh, when you take the cache memory, we didn't discuss earlier. Cache memory is used to store program instruction that are frequently accessed by software during the operation. Now, when you take the cache memory, nowadays we can find out cache memories in your computers. Earlier it was not there much, but now when you are buying a computer. You can see they have uh, in the technical uh, uh, detail they have put RAM this much, hard disk this much, then cache memory also they have mentioned. So if you have a big cache memory means you have, you can keep more data, but usually you're getting uh, with MBs and all that, cache memory is coming with MBs, megabytes, right? So cache memory even, you can take different cache memories are there. The cache memory is used to store program and instruction that are frequently accessed. Amulem access to data to get the AI, may a cache memory get the Agane, Amo data got me at the Agane. So, type of cache memories are what level one cache memory is there. Cache is extremely fast. These things, if you have highlighted, please highlight this part. This is extremely fast, but relatively small. That means uh, capacity is small and it is embedded with the processor. Then level two cache. Level two cache is there. 
often more capacity than L1. Make it about a capacity ready. Highlight that it may be located on the CPO on separate. CPO cathode the end of pull on separate in the sense motherboard. Motherboard the cathode the end of pull on. Motherboard the end of pull on. But L1 is definitely inside the CPO. L2 way the my product may have been a pull on. Then L3. Cache is typically specialized memory that works to improve the performance of L1 and L2. It can be significantly slower than L1 and L2, but it is usually double the speed of RAM. For a RAM, make a speed like a vertical, but L1 and L2, slower than L1 and L2, you can highlight that. When you compare the capacity, capacity is higher than the L1 and L2. We can see the capacity of L3, but it is slower than L1 and L2, but it usually double the speed of RAM. That means RAM make a data transmit and transfer rate at the speed. That is speed can be doubled by using the L3 cache. So this is definitely in the motherboard. This is definitely inside the motherboard, not, not inside the CPU. This is definitely inside the uh, motherboard. Then we'll uh, go to next part. Ram. Random access memory. RAM is the main memory of the computer that holds data for running application and required data for the computer. Now, as an example, if you take RAM, right? Now, if you take RAM, suppose this is our RAM, right? So, uh, even you uh, don't uh, yeah, open any program. This is program map open karat nada. Operating system maker. Operating system will be loaded to RAM. Even we are not opening any program. Yeah, as soon as you uh, switch on the computer, RAM, uh, operating system will be loaded to RAM. It was a currently working program. Word open Excel. If you try to open more program, your computer can be stuck when the pull one. There is a one reason, a reason, and you can check the usage of the RAM by. Uh, pressing the control or the uh, task manager you can uh, see how, how much your RAM is uh, using uh, that is percentage the disk ka, CPU ka, usage and the programs also taking the RAM and all that so uh, when you take RAM we have different uh, types of RAM also available uh, SRAM is there is static RAM SRAM is random access uh, memory that retain data bits in its memory as long as power is being supplied. SRAM is used for cache memory and registers. So SRAM is uh, used for cache memory and registers. I like that part. Then we have different other RAM called DRAM, dynamic RAM. This type of RAM is continuously refreshed. We need to refresh or it will lose its content. It's like this. Now, suppose uh, you have data, something like this. I will uh, show you here. I will. Uh, okay, now you can see. Right? Now, suppose your data is something like this. This is called, suppose we call one, right? So after time, sometime, this data can be changed like this. You need to keep like this, but your data, that voltage or whatever it is, can be changed like this. So your data is changing means you are, you are keeping the uh, fault data, right? So to avoid that, you have to refresh this all the time. Not the refresh by uh, pressing the RF5, right click, uh, refresh uh, that, uh, that uh, RAM, that uh, technology, uh, in the technology, they are refreshing the RAM, refreshing the data. That means this will not come in like this. It will continuously keep it. That means it is not changing. 
Now you want to reference, you have to reference, right? And keep that uh, continuous lip without change. So this is called dynamic cramp. This is called dynamic cramp. Uh, okay, right? So uh, the this type of ram is continuously refreshed, or it will lose its content, right? So uh, there's another one, SD ram. SD ram. So I think you have heard about SD uh, SD ram. Uh, this is a DDR one, DDR three, DDR four, like that. It is coming. It is type of memory that synchronizes itself with the computer system clock. It um, pulse or it uh, will synchronize that is uh, inside uh, we have clock clock uh, that pulses are there inside the computer uh, so it is synchronizing with the uh, clock pulses this is called sd ram sd ram right so these are the three different types of uh, ram so if we have i think uh, somewhere top of page or somewhere you have the spaces Write down uh, this uh, small chart you have to draw. Uh, in your book even because uh, if you have a writing book, doesn't matter you use that because I want uh, I want to give some uh, another uh, topic because I couldn't, uh, I forgot to uh, put it to the tune. So I will be explaining that part also that is North Bridge and South Bridge. I haven't uh, put it to the uh, dude. So uh, it's better if you have a book, writing book, write down uh, DRAM and SRAM, the differences between DRAM and SRAM. Differences between DRAM and SRAM. You write here DRAM. Then SRAM. Differences. Take down this uh, table, I will tell you the points. Under DRAM write down, under DRAM write down, this is not in the tube, you have to write it somewhere, under DRAM write down, use, use, separate capacitor to capacitor, there's a small uh, electronic gadget, use separate capacitors to store each bit of data, use, separate capacitor to store each bit of data. Then under SRAM write down, use transistors to store single bit of data. Use transistors to store single bit of data. Then under DRAM write down, need period, need periodic refreshment, need periodic refreshment to maintain, to maintain, to maintain, the charge in the capacitor to maintain the charge in the capacitor for data. Charge in the capacitor for data. Then SRAM side write down, does not need periodic refreshment. Does not need periodic refreshment.
Then DRAM side write down less expensive. Less expensive. Then SRAM side write down. Uh, more expensive compared to DRAM, more expensive. Then under DRAM write down, slower than SRAM, that is data transfer rate and all that, slower than SRAM. Then uh, SRAM side, Faster than DRAM. Faster than DRAM. The last point, uh, DRAM side, density is high. Density means uh, that uh, number of information that can be stored, right? Density is high. So the SRAM side, low density or less memory, low density. When you uh, compare the power even, we'll try, write down that point also. Consume less power in DRAM. Consume less power, consume less power. Yes, RAM, consume more power. Put example, DRAM uh, main memory, that is normal RAM, we are using DRAM, normal RAM. So SRAM is using cache memories, registers, cache memories and registers. Okay, those, because those things are very important asking for the exams also because earlier earlier syllabus you ha you had a separate unit for memory management from 2019 you have memory management part inside the unit two right so there that's why this is a bit important than the unit one right this unit is very important than the unit one okay uh then we'll go to the non-volatile memory. Non-volatile means when the power goes, nothing will happen. Now, if you have something on the hard disk, you have a movie. When the power goes, nothing will happen. That movie is there safe, right? It is If it is in the pen drive, if it is in the CD, DVD, whatever, it will, nothing will happen. Or oh, inside the ROM even, nothing will happen, right? So that is called volat non-volatile. Permanent memory. So this is a type of computer memory that has the capability to hold save data even if the power is turned off right from hard disk etc uh, read only memory rom rom retains its content even when the computer is turned off from store essential programs such as program that boosts the computer so within bracket put bios and boost app loader bios 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 program and bootstrap loader. This program are there inside the ROM. So that's why even the power goes, nothing will happen to these programs. Because of these programs, we can uh, boot up the computer without any problem. So nothing will happen to that uh, programs inside the ROM. Then there are different types of ROMs. One is PROM, programmable read-only memory. So there are some ROMs. Those can be programmable, programmable 
uh, only uh, once you can program, but you can't erase these uh, PROMs. They are under the write down. Here, write down. It is a memory chip. It is a memory chip. On which data can be written only? On which data can be written only? Once. Data can be written only once. Once a program has been written into, once the once the program has been written onto written onto a PROM, it remains there forever. It remains there forever. Then you have something called EPROM. EPROM is erasable programmable, read only memory. That means you can erase and program, erase and program several times, right? They are write down. EPROM is a special type of EPROM is a special type of memory special type of memory that retains its contents, that retains its content until it is exposed to, until it is exposed to Ultraviolet light, UV light, ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light clears its content. The ultraviolet light clears its content. Making it possible to program the memory. Making it possible to reprogram. Making it possible to reprogram the memory. How program can be done? The next one, EEPROM. That is electrically erasable. Now earlier one, EEPROM we are erasing through uh, ultraviolet. About but uh, this one, EEPROM means electrically erasable program read on it. So it can be erased by exposing it to an electrical charge. When you see the electrical charge, uh, that can be erased, right? Okay, then we will go to the secondary storage. Now, secondary storage, we have different storage type. One is magnetic, then optical, and the solid state, right? So magnetic storage devices, they are using magnetic fields to store data. So we'll go through the theory part. Magnetic storage is the manipulation of magnetic fields on a medium in order to record audio, video, or other data. So it maintains computer storage mechanism, have generally involved in spinning disco, platter, and read, write, heads on, and uh, armage. That means, um, in the earlier hard disk and all that, we had these platters and disk. Uh, they are rotating. Uh, head disk going uh, forward and backward. So uh, that's how they have uh, manipulating these uh, magnetic fields to store data. Many types of magnetic storage involve a tape medium, uh, uh, rather uh, either on a real, see, uh, either EI should be there uh, on a real or in a uh, cassette. Uh, that that is moved by read and write it. So hard disk, floppy disk, uh, magnetic tapes are there. So they are using magnetic 
storage and magnetic fields. Then you have optical storage. When you are going through that uh, memory hierarchy, I think you can, uh, you had those, uh, these uh, words actually, optical storage and all that. So optical storage is any storage method in which data is written and read uh, with a laser for archival or backup purposes. So we are using here laser beams, right? Typically, data is written to optical media such as CDs and DVD. Now, CDs and DVDs are considered as uh, this optical storage, Blu rays also, right? For several years, uh, proponent has spoken of optical storage as a near future replacement of both hard drives in personal computers and tape backup in mass storage. So, optical law. Uh, uh, can be replaced this tape backups even in future. Optical media is more durable than tape and less vulnerable to environmental conditions. Right? That's why uh, it's telling that uh, it can be in uh, future, they can be used for uh, backups and all that. On the other hand, it uh, tends to be slower than typical hard drive speed and uh, to offer lower storage capacity. Nowadays, we have, we have uh, lower capacities, but Blu-rays we have a bit uh, more capacity now, but in future, this optical media will be using, actually now, uh, rather than optical media, solid states are, uh, has become very popular, right? So we'll uh, go to the solid state, that is uh, pen drives, memory cards and all that, coming under this one, there yeah, write down, under that write down, Optical, sorry, uh, under solid state right now, solid state storage is a type of computer storage media, solid state storage is a type of computer storage media made from silicon microchips made from silicon microchips. This is store data electronically. This is store data electronically instead of magnetically. Instead of magnetically. This solid state storage can be found this solid state storage can be found in three forms in three forms in three forms as solid state drive ssd i think we discussed what is ssd last week and nowadays computers are having these ssds rather other than the hard disk uh, solid state drives ssd within back put ssd perma solid state cards memory cards and all the solid state cards ssc ssc And solid state modules, SSM. Solid state modules, SSM. Ram and all that. Solid state modules, SSM. Can you read that? Great data transfer to and from storage media data transfer, uh, you write down like this, a data transfer rate. Data transfer rate is higher than the other medias, is higher than the other medias. The media and less heat, less heat. 
and more predictable life span. Can a good call make why you can pull more predictable life span. So put example, uh, pen drive that is flash drives, memory cards, flash drives, memory cards. This, uh, I think uh, last week I discussed some part of the sequential and uh, random access. Now when you have the data inside the tapes and all that, they have sequential access. So if you are data like this, you have to access one after another, one after another. Get passive that come out. Access can go wrong with your tape recorder. So the uh, magnetic tape. So we have this uh, way of accessing the data. It under the method the data access can only kill. Yeah, I know the medical pass color method. Oh, from this side they have to uh, rewind. Are you a passport? Are you a man? But this is called sequential. Right. Then uh, random, if you take random access, so suppose you have data like this, one, two, three, four, five. So you can jump from one place to another place, from here to here, then from here to this one, then here to this one, like this, jumping. So that is called uh, uh, random access, right? Okay, uh, can you take this down on the tute? Uh, Okay, uh, please take this down. Uh, diagram sequential in front of sequential is one random this one, right? Okay, take it down. Uh, while you are drawing, I will tell you. Sequential start at the beginning and read through it or in order. So it is going one by one. One by one, it is going sequential. Then uh, random access. So uh, I have given the example tape. Random individual addresses identify directly and access the data immediately. Now, if you take as example. Optical discs, optical disc CDs and all that. Yeah, uh, using random access method, random access method. So you can jump to any data, individual addresses, identify directly and access the data immediately. I think you uh, uh, have taken this down. Okay. Then we'll go to the registers. Different registers are there inside the processor. So CPU registers in computer architecture, the registers are very fast computer memory, which are used to execute programs and operation efficiently, right? So with the main memory and the register ALU and CU is there. Then you have different registers, MDR, MAR, PC, IR, uh, this uh, R, 0 to R1, register 0 to 0 01. Then there's something called accumulator and all that. Those, that. those are also registers. We'll go through one by one. So write down uh, under accumulator. Yeah, write down. This is most frequently used register. This is the most frequently used register 
This is the most frequently used register. Used to store data. Used to store data. Taken from memory. Taken from memory. It is in different number in different microprocessors. It is in different numbers. It is in different numbers in different microprocessors. That means there can be different registers, accumulators, right? It is in different numbers in different microprocessors. It depends on the microprocessor. Yeah, even I haven't put accumulate. Then memory address register. So MAR. MAR. Under that write down, it holds. It holds the address of the location. It holds the address of the location. to be accessed to be accessed from the memory MARN MDR we are going to discuss later MARN MDR Together, facilitate facilitate the communication. Facilitate the communication of the CPU and of the CPU and the main memory. CPU and the main memory. Then uh, memory data register. So there's another register called memory data register. Under that write down, it contains data now that now earlier one contained uh, address of the location. Now this holds the data, right? Memory data register. That's the difference. It contains data to be written into O. It contains data to be written into O. To be read out to be read out from the address location, from the address location. So there are some general purpose registers. These are numbers uh, R1 to R uh, minus one and used to store temporary data during any ongoing operation, right? So that is called general purpose registers. R1, R2, and all that. Then you have something called program count. Program count. Under that, write down. Program counter, that is called PC. Program counter is used to is used to keep the track of Keep the track of execution of the program. Execution of the program.
it contains the memory address it contains the memory address of the next instruction of the next instruction to be fetched ape api katha kara fetch decode execute ekage next instruction ekata api yanawa kiyala katha kara ilanga instruction ek ganna oge so that should be now if you are starting from 1 now ilanga da 2 ilanga da 3 ekin eka value yi yanne pa so that is done by the pc program count next instruction to be fetched pc points to the address of the pc points to the address of the next instruction next instruction to be fetched from the main memory to be fetched from the main memory when the previous instruction when the previous instruction has been successfully completed has been successfully completed program counter also functions to program counter also functions to count the number of instructions count the number of instructions then you have something called instruction registers instruction registers they are write down the ir holds that is instruction register ir holds the instruction register ir holds the uh, holds the instruction all the instruction which is just about to be executed which is just about to be executed execute when that tiyenama eka thamai meka tiyagena inne ilangata execute wenna eka thamai just to be just about to be executed e then execute wenna hadana eka thamai tiyagena inne execute the instruction from pc is the instruction from pc is fetched and stored in ir fetched and stored in ir as soon as the instruction is placed in ir as soon as the instruction in uh, placed in ir as soon as the instruction placed in ir the cpu starts executing 
the CPU starts executing the instruction and instruction and the PC points to the next instruction. The PC points to the next instruction. To be executed, to be executed. Okay, so before we start in memory addressing part, because in memory addressing we have different calculations also. I have missed something called uh, chipset bridges, that is North Bridge and South Bridge. Okay, uh, can you take down topic somewhere here? I, I don't think uh, it is enough spaces here. So it's better you can uh, take your writing book and write down uh, topic chipset, <coughs> chipset. Right. So here, uh, this is the motherboard. I think uh, earlier also I showed it. Right. I'll make a pen or motherboard. Dega. Make a chipset. We have two chipset. Right. Chipset. Dega. That's a circuit. I will. I will. Uh, I will remove this part and uh, yes, I can remove this one and I'll show you. Right. So when you take the uh, motherboard like this way, that is my processor is here now. Now I have removed the processor. I don't have processor here. So when you take the processor this side, you have uh, in your first you are getting the this is called North Bridge. Uh, actual this is actually a heat sink is here. Heat sink is in the mega galaxy. Wow, so my mega North Bridge is the end. I will show that uh, here you have South Bridge. Better the end of body circuit chipset. Take South Bridge. Take up. So this uh, actual North Bridge is. Uh, connecting this uh, processor, processor I, when the memory set RAM make, I don't know whether it's clear for you all, right? Uh, no RAM set so RAM I may connect karane, uh, through the North Bridge. So when South Bridge karane, PC slot same. I will no video or AGP slots USB ports Connect color then the So these are very important North Bridge and South Bridge. All right. I will try to remove this one while uh, I am. Give me a second. Camera side there. Camera down there. Go like that. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, I remove this one. This is heat sink one. This is called North Bridge. I don't know whether it's clear for you all. Right? This is North Bridge. Uh, let me uh, remove the other one also. This is called South Bridge. Take a product period. Heat paste. Methane heat paste. Take a gavel at the end. Heat sink. Temperature absorb current. Right. So this is North Bridge. This is South Bridge. I may chipset the Katamai. May computer can mainly better current chipset the circuits the I think. So uh, we write down the uh, uh, notes related to that one. Write down the topic. Uh, chipset. Chipset. Under that, write down.
in older computers in older computers all the chips were spread all the chips were spread across the motherboard across the motherboard in modern computers in modern computers the number of chips is reduced the number of chips are reduced and centralized are centralized into particular location into particular location into particular location therefore multiple chips are combined together therefore multiple chips are combined together to form one single chip to form one single chip this chip that can replace this chip that can replace a large number of chip is called the large number of chips is called a chipset What I mean, chips. What I can do is that my handle turn. I can do my chipset. I can again. We have two different uh, chipset. Write down. Continue with that. Chipset handles the communication between. Chipset handle the communication between. Various components. Various components. various components um, such as cpu cpu peripherals and buses and buses north bridge and south bridge are the two chips set north bridge and south bridge are the two chips in the chipset north bridge and south bridge are the two chips in the chipset i think you can see the diagram uh, we'll write down after that i will draw the diagram uh, write down uh, first one north bridge north bridge there yeah, i down north bridge is located in the north bridge is located in the northern sec section of the motherboard northern section of the motherboard it is directly connected to the it is directly connected to the 
CPU, RAM, AGP, and PCI Express slot slots, and PCI Express slot. No oh, AGP for accelerated graphic port. I think uh, for uh, those who are playing uh, games and all that, they have idea about this system, right? AGP. So anyway, the, these are the ports. Uh, we have discussed some ports here. AGP, PCI Express slots, right? Uh, usually, Northbridge operates. Usually, Northbridge operates at a faster speed at a faster speed as it connects to high speed components, as it connects to high speed components. In the computer, then right now South Bridge, second one South Bridge. Then right now South Bridge is located in the southern section. Southern section of the motherboard of the motherboard. It connect the components such as PCI bus slots, BIOS, SATA and IDE connectors, SATA and IDE connectors, and USB ports, and USB ports. Okay, uh, take down this diagram.
uh, no need to uh, know about these components separately, but remember Northbridge, we, we can PCI Express, a CPR, RAM are connecting to Northbridge, uh, PCI, USB especially, IDE, uh, those electricity, those uh, BIOS and all that are connected to Southbridge circuits, chipset, right? So because sometimes you are getting uh, MCQ type questions, uh, but which one is connected to the North Bridge or which one is connected to South Bridge? That kind of questions can come. Okay, I think uh, you have finished that. Okay, right. So uh, today we uh, discuss up to the memory management. There are some uh, calculations actually. Ganam vagya khadan tino memory management calculations are there. So uh, today I'm not going to start that part because uh, less number of students due to a uh, bad weather condition. right? Next week, I'm going to finish this lesson. May lesson I need to wake up and get ready for now. Usually, what we are doing is we are doing some unit tests. Other than the past question, say what we are doing unit tests. I thought I'd be a part of the other physically. We couldn't do that because we um, shifted to online sessions. Well, that we are going to I unit two weka the Ivara Gana thought unit one kai two weka mama online session with the hari. I'm conducting that uh, unit test. So so I am giving grading, right? Then grading naga deno marks and grading. So you have to maintain a file. I will uh, tell you on the next week because uh, you don't have files with you. Uh, I couldn't uh, give them to you all. Uh, but uh, from next month I will arrange uh, uh, to collect them from the Samadhi Institute, right? I thought I will collect run. In that file, you have to keep all the unit tests maintain current node. So when we are coming to the physical classes, I'm definitely I'm checking them. I will maintain that. So then uh, you will be uh, uh, definitely you can go for good, uh, very good result that is A for A pass. And the uh, other thing is in the term test, you can get uh, higher marks than. Uh, other students, they can say, that is our way of doing the class. Target is our target is to uh, get uh, full marks for questions. Full marks that is our main target, a result oriented class, right? Dedicated for excellence, right? So, um, we'll do like that. I will arrange, but uh, what you have to do is you have to go through the units. Then you need one copy, you are a but some students uh, they could uh, uh, attend to the classes. I will arrange. Uh, uh, I thought of uh, arranging physical class for them, but uh, in the situation going like this, we'll arrange a separate uh, online session to cover that unit one part. So next week we are going to uh, finish this lesson and uh, next week uh, we are doing some calculation that is very important part. So most of the questions have come from that part. So I try to participate. Okay, we'll finish for the day. Thank you very much.